Hello, my name is Marat. I'm a PhD student in medicinal chemistry, and today I would like to talk about Editas Medicine. As you may notice, on Friday it went down 15% just in a single day session, and it's really a lot for a company. So I would like to explain you why it's happening and why it's maybe not as bad. So initially I will outline a little bit about this company, then we'll go through some negative sides of this company, and then we'll go to positive sides and my outlook on the future of this company. So let's dive in. And before we start, I just want to remind you that this is not financial advice and I'm just sharing my opinion as I would share it with my friends. So I just wanted to start with explaining what Editor's Medicine is all about. And this is one of four key companies in CRISPR technology field. So it was founded in 2013 and on their web page you can see that it was founded by Feng Zhang, George Church, Kei Jong and David Liu. So I especially like this David Liu guy who also founder of Beam Therapeutics along with Feng Zhang and Kei Jong. So and this is definitely a great team of scientists and I talked about them in my previous video so you can check this out. And Editor's Medicine stand out from the CRISPR crowd that they took a risk and they decided to pursue first in vivo trial. So basically they decided to focus on in vivo medicine compared to more kind of safer side of the story of ex vivo. So for CRISPR technology, the leading drug CTX001 is ex vivo. For some other companies, they focused on ex vivo first because in vivo it's harder to predict, it's harder to deliver medicine and editors medicine decide to take this risk and see if they could be a leader in in vivo therapy. In their pipeline, the leading drug is Edit 101 and it's applied to cure blindness. So they inject this drug directly into eye and trying to deliver CRISPR to cells that surround eye and cure blindness this way. Then you can see that they have some other drugs in their pipeline and some more traditional approaches. So same story, sickle cell disease, and I believe they're using similar approach to CRISPR therapeutics. So beta thalassemia, also as you can see, it's a single drug that used against these both diseases because they're using this same method that I described in my video about CRISPR therapeutics. So then they have oncology department in their pipeline and it's based on CAR T cell technology. So also this is not something unique to editor's medicine, but they probably focused on different type of cancers. I'm not too familiar with this CAR T cell industry yet, but basically it's oncology and it's a lot of different diseases could be targeted in this field. So it's good to see that they have some progress, even though these drugs, as you can see, they only in lead optimization studies. So it means that they are far away from clinical trials, at least one year or two years from clinical trials. And then after clinical trials, who knows how long it will take for them to arrive at the market. Now, as we briefly discussed what Editor's Medicine is actually doing and what they up to in the pipeline, let's discuss what kind of bad news drove this share price so much down. So what happened on Friday is that the analyst from Goldman Sachs initiated coverage of this stock and he decided that according to his belief that rating is sell for Editor's Medicine with a price range of $20. So and this is compared to price of $40 back then, it's huge decline. So he basically saying that this stock is overvalued by two times. The main reason for this analyst to say that this company should go to a $20 is his disbelief in this gene therapy edit 101. As you can see, they say edit 11, but they meant edit 101. So that it doesn't produce meaningful improvement to patient vision. So, and according to that, this analyst, it's basically very bad and this is why you should sell this stock. But in my opinion, this is just initial stages of clinical trials. So, and they probably administer just lower dose than what is meaningful for a patient to feel the difference. And they just trying to test if it's safe, then they will proceed to the next step and administer higher concentration of the drug. 
and I guess this is what's happening and also if you look at the editor's website they didn't disclose any clinical data yet because they want to accumulate more data before actually making any judgment so in my opinion this analyst is a bit too early to judge and as a result from this single news stock dropped 15% so editors medicine wasn't doing very well before that they were dropping compared to other companies but with this downgrade from goldman sachs analyst everyone started just panic selling it so in order to see how credible this report is in terms of like who is this guy who is covering editors medicine at goldman sachs i decided to check his profile and honestly it doesn't look too bad in terms of like i really enjoy his profile that he's experienced guy he was like in different roles on previous companies and what i like the most about him is that he got phd degree in relevant topic so he was working on rna and rna basically it's closely related to crispr cas9 technology because main ingredient of crispr cas9 is rna but then if you look at his profile on tpranks as you can see success rate for him is just 49 percent so basically it's just 50 50 like one day you got right another day you got it wrong and average return is 18 percent it's not too bad but i guess like for these recent years it could be even higher for some analysts so for me it kind of indicates that probably he is not as trustworthy as people actually trying to listen to him because i feel that that his employer goldman sachs kind of generate him a better name than he actually is and then i found another article talking about this story that editors medicine got crushed on friday and it says that the same analyst was employed in november back at as an investment company and he covered editors as well and he also mentioned that it's a sell and his rating back then in november was 14 dollars so and in November, you can check the price. It was significantly high. And since November to January, it was only increasing. So it's kind of like give you again idea that probably this analyst is not as trustworthy as he actually trying to pretend. But again, this is very short term period of time. So we should see at least a couple of years to see if what he's saying makes sense or it doesn't. This is completely up to you if you trust this analyst or if you trust some other sources, I just try to outline you the whole picture about this specific news. So, and let's move into the next one about CEO. So the problem with CEO at Editors Medicine is that they changed three people at this position in last two years. And it doesn't sound too good in my opinion, because when you change in CEO so frequently, it's probably indicator of a problem. And I see this is, could be one of these reasons why stock price is dropping down. So, and they appointed the most recent CEO just in February of 2021. So this guy was in office just for, I don't know, like two months. And it's very hard to say if anything is changing for good or for bad from this change of CEO. And the latest CEO is James Mullen. So this is experienced guy. He used to be CEO at Biogen and then he worked at some other pharma companies. So he's definitely not new to the field. But when I read on the Wikipedia all details about Biogen and how he was basically forced to step down from this position. And if you combine this story with share price for Biogen, you can basically see how he stepped down and share price started just going up. So it could be a coincidence, but this is just something that you have to know. To say if this change of CEO was good or bad, it's very hard because it's been just a couple of months. I believe that we probably should wait for at least one year to see if any improvement is happening within the company or not, or maybe even longer. The next point that I want to bring to you is reviews from Glassdoor. And it's actually kind of connected to the CEO change because you can see what employees is saying about CEO, saying about managers, saying about the future of the company. I know that this is very biased metric, but it's kind of interesting to see what employees thinking about this company. As you can see, this is Glassdoor web page for Editors Medicine. So, and what we see here is that basically reviews from employees. And if you're not familiar with this website, it's kind of handy to have, especially if you're changing your job. But anyway, let's move on to editors. So as you can see, they have some positive feedback from employees, but 
I'm really worried about these one star ratings and specifically most of these one star ratings are saying that they disapprove CEO, that terrible leadership, toxic environment, then some few good ones, then again stay away, horrible culture. So you can read this, I will leave link in the description. So and if you go into the second page, it's also not great, great mission poor management. So they probably saying that something wrong with CEO, most of them. And it's kind of nice to see that they actually address this issue and they change their CEO recently. So maybe this issue will disappear in the future. And as you can see, they have some great reviews from employees as well. But as I said, again, it's very biased metric and you shouldn't trust just this because maybe it's a fake reviews, you never know. The last piece of bad news about editors that I want to share with you today is that Abvi exited Allergen editors crispy deal on eye diseases. So what happened in there is that Allergen, they initially partnered with editors on development of Edit 101, but then later Allergen was bought by Abvi and Abvi, after acquiring Allergen, decided that they want to cancel this deal with editors. So, and they just walked away from this deal. It's definitely not great for editors, but it's hard to say if this is actually a meaningful move or if Abvi just decide not to pursue it because it's not necessarily saying that something wrong with Edit 101 that we don't know yet and they insiders, they are familiar and they decide just to walk away from this deal. But this is something that you have to take into consideration because this might be an indication that something wrong with this medicine. If you enjoyed this video so far and find it useful, please leave a like and subscribe and we'll move to something that I find good about editor's medicine. The first piece of good news about editors is that CEO who was just appointed to be a CEO, James Mellon, he bought a lot of shares. Specifically, he bought 1.2 million of stock for $46 of average price. And $46 compared to current price of less than $35 is huge difference. So if CEO was willing to pay $46 and now you can buy it for $35, if you believe in this company long term, maybe it's good point to start thinking about buying instead of panic selling. I'm not saying that CEO is always right, but this is something that you have to take into consideration because the only reason for CEO to buy is that he believes that he can make more money from buying this stock compared to buying any other stock. So it's really strong indicator that basically this company from CEO standpoint will do good long term and he's willing to put his own money on the line. Another good news for Editors Medicine is that they were able to raise a lot of money from share offering back in January. And as you can see, the price tag was $66, compare this to $35 as of right now. So as a result of this offering, they were able to raise additional 230 millions. And this is in addition to pile of cash that they already had in the bank. And if you look at the balance sheet for Editors Medicine, you can see the total assets is sitting at around 570 millions and total liabilities 180 millions. So if you subtract this, we are getting around 400 millions. But then this is not including this latest round of offering because it happened in 2021. So they sit in at around 600 millions in cash without including any debt. If you go into the income statement, you can see that operating expenses for 2020 for Editor's Medicine were around 225 million. And if we assume that they will be spending as much money as in 2020, the current balance sheet allows them not to raise any money for at least two years and proceed with their operational expenses. The next point that I want to bring to you is that it seems to be analysts from Goldman Sachs completely missing out, that their pipeline has many other drugs. It's not only Edit 101. Even if this drug will fail, but we don't know this for sure yet. We don't even know preliminary data because it wasn't released by editors. So even if we exclude this drug, they have another drug in the pipeline that is yeah in lead optimization stage, but it definitely will proceed to AND in clinic at some point. Maybe it's not successful. Most of the drugs are not successful for most of the companies, but we at least know that these drugs against sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia are already working for CRISPR therapeutics. And CAR T cells technology 
is already proven as well because we have three registered drugs on the market that using CAR T cell as a technology. So I believe that at least one of these oncology drugs will make it to the market. And you have to look at the bigger picture because it seems to be that this analyst is predicting price for a relatively short period of time. And maybe in the next couple of months, it will go all the way down to 20. So if you look at this pipeline and your time horizon for investment is longer than five years, you can see that they have plenty of other drug candidates. And even one of them fail, they basically shouldn't be worried too much about it. Of course, it will be upsetting if first drug candidate will fail, but this is what happened in pharma all the time. So in the last point that is good about editors medicine from my standpoint, that they have strong portfolio of intellectual property. And as I discussed in my latest video about patent war in CRISPR field. So editors that was founded by Feng Zhang and David Liu, they hold some important patents that as of right now, functional in the US and Charpentier and Downer trying to fight back. But it seems to be that editors will be able to hold some patent in this field at least. And even royalties from these patents will generate some revenue in the future. So I believe it's kind of hard to say that this company is dead. Overall, I believe that Editor's Medicine is quite attractive offer at the share price of $35. As you can see that the market cap is just 2.3 billion. And if we compare this to other companies in the field, let's say Beam Therapeutics, they have 4.5 billion. And remember, Beam Therapeutics doesn't have anything in clinical trials. So then we go into Intelia, Intelia 4.7 billion. Also, they kind of not too far away from editors in terms of progress on clinical trial stage. So, and then we go into CRISPR therapeutics and CRISPR therapeutics is almost 9 billion. But these 9 billion justified because CRISPR is way ahead in clinical trials compared to other companies. And this is why it traded so much higher. We have to wait and see what kind of result editors will provide later this year, as they promised some clinical data about Edit 101. And I believe if this news will be good, share price could go as high as it used to be at $80 per share. And then valuation will be, of course, significantly higher and closer to the competition. I am personally unable to resist such a low price for editor's medicine and I will be opening some small position next week because even in spite me not liking Feng Zhang, one of co-founders, I still believe that this field has a bright future and editor's one of four companies that basically pioneer in this field. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe as I'm planning to do more videos about CRISPR related stocks and my next one will be most likely about Intelli Therapeutics, which is one of four key companies in the field. So, and I'll see you in the next one.